So I actually want to start getting ready in September for a January show. Welcome to the Buns and Thighs Podcast, where we talk about fitness, health, and everything else. We help you move past all of the marketing schemes, hacks, and Instagram trainers out there so that you can learn how to truly be fit. I'm a corrective exercise specialist, and I own PTNC Gym in Colorado Springs, Colorado. I help people reduce and eliminate chronic pain while also losing fat and gaining muscle. I bring into the show other personal trainers and clients who want to discuss topics that you will definitely want to hear about. If you want to learn how to get fit, listen to the show, and thank you for tuning in. Say that again. Because <laughs> I have a response Everyone, for it. I think, yeah, you look like Andrew Tate. I have been told that many times. Uh, there is someone uh, on my Twitch channel that uh, literally comes in every single time and says, what's up, Andrew Tate? And I'm like, stop calling me that. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's, that's, not, that's not as funny as you think it is. Like, I've, I've actually been told that a, by a lot of people. And I'm just like, listen, I've, I I've seen funny. the guy, and this dude is scrawny as fuck, and a bastard, I think we can all agree. Uh, and uh, he, he looks way more Italian than, than I look, for one. I think we just ha- we're just bald with, like, you know, a clean-shaved beard. I think the eyebrows and the, the eyes kind of <laughs> give it away to you. Yeah, this, the laugh, the smile, I think all of that is pretty much just like him. Like, he does have a very masculine message in some instances. Yes, he does. He is, like, a shock content kind of guy. He is, like, a douche for, like, basically being a pimp, basically. But um, there's some messages where he was, like, there's one thing that he said that I heard uh, was, like, you have to be a rocket. Rocket ships don't stop halfway to the moon. They keep going. So no matter what, if you stop midway of your journey, you're going to fail. You have to be a rocket ship. You have to keep going. You've got to keep pushing no matter the gravity, no matter the hardship, no matter what you have to push through, you've got to keep going. Uh, Stuff like that he's said before. Too. I have. Uh, so do you know that he like, uh, I don't know if it was allegedly or he actually got convicted for it. Um, it's allegedly. It's allegedly, allegedly. The whole sex allegedly. trafficking thing. Because I've, I've tried to keep like when I watched him, he's keeping up with it as well. And then, which is fortunately kind of you're talking about, about Tim Cast. He hasn't been, yeah, he hasn't been, been, um, he hasn't been, acu- he's been accused of stuff, but he's never been convicted of anything yet. Hmm. So it is all alleged of the that these things happened, and okay. a lot of girls have said this isn't true. So uh, it's, and to me, they've they've kept him in like this jail without actually proving anything it's all just hearsay right at the moment have so you seen none of it have you seen this workout moment, video oh sorry go ahead true. yeah i um I, no, 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 so no, it's no. like a it's it, it feels a really similar to the whole michael jackson um like scenario where uh like 90 percent of the world believes this is true but it's because they're not part of his life and they, they're just listening to media and stuff. And then uh, another side doesn't believe it's true and they're trying to prove his innocence. And him being a douchebag does not help his case. <laughs> That's... Right. I but know. People call toxic masculinity bad and there is no such thing as to- toxic masculinity there's just masculinity and people just can't deal with it no i'm not even talking about like toxic ma- have- masculinity i've i've seen his videos and that dude's in my opinion that dude is a douche like 100 <laughs> percent content yeah it's, it's shocking yeah. content it's kind of stuff that he's trying to say on purpose just to like make a name for himself i don't think that he truly believes most of this but i think he's just trying to be hyperbole or exaggerate a few things just to kind of either get a point across or just to kind of come across as more masculine than he is but he does have a few things that are okay a lot of things are dumb like the fact that he has a bunch of only fans girls or a whole bunch of like cam girls and uh he's the one that types dirty to the men who are talking to the girls so he's running their profiles and doing all the the nasty talk, which is just disgusting to me. And <laughs> what? Just gross. And yeah. Oh yeah, my yeah. god, that's so funny. I don't think any of it is good. The dude's he's whacking off, and he's just like, oh yeah, rich. <laughs> dude's like yeah. whacking off and be he's, like, oh yeah, yeah, uh, do that for me. And Andrew Tate's like, oh yeah, I can, I can do that for you. 
<laughs> like, what? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's so disgusting, man. I don't know who would want to do that. And yeah, you got to have a, a filthy mind to to type to these weird ass guys who are trying to talk to these girls. Yeah, it's that's it's crazy, really, really weird. But at the same time, he you got to be you're innocent until proven guilty, at least in America, hopefully still. But uh, yeah, that's crazy. It, it it really is to me. Like the whole Andrew Tate thing is crazy. Have you seen his um his hilarious workout video? Have not. Okay, so this dude should not be making workout videos. <laughs> he literally starts up saying like, "Yeah, I'm probably, most likely, I'm probably stronger than you. Uh, I'm gonna do 30 kilos, but you're probably gonna have to start at 10 kilos. If you do what I do, you're gonna get a a, a perfect specimen body like me." And I'm looking at him. I'm like, "You look like..." somebody that smokes cigarettes and just got off of heroin and uh that's how you lost all your, like lost all your weight and uh a, a strong breeze could knock you over dude like chill <laughs> chill out and uh yeah. he proceeds I think he's got a weird humor yeah he proceeds to uh give like examples of like this is all you need to do and it's just terrible for him the whole time and he literally says we're not going to get into the science we're not going to get into this muscle and that muscle and and why you should do it that's for geeks and nerds if you want a perfect body you don't need to know any of that shit you just need to you just need to exercise and do it right keep it simple three exercises only i'm just like and he's like for three hours i'm like what <laughs> what what's going on <laughs> And I it's, think if and you it's all in his, his bedroom. Videos, like you're watching him. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like if you watch his videos, you have to watch it from the standpoint of as if you're watching Impractical Jokers, or if you're watching something like a co comedy show and not something that you need to take advice from. It's bananas, dude. It, like that dude is crazy. And, and then I'm, I'm, all this is happening over there. And then somebody comes on my channel. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about like literally that you are not the only person that has said this. Um, and uh, he, there's like, oh, you know, you look like Andrew Tate. I'm like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, well, in some instances, it, it means it look you look rich then. But other than that, yeah, he's, he's kind of a. <laughs> A weird guy. He's a definitely a weird guy, and uh, it like I don't know if it's true or not with the whole um, what was it Romanian girls sex trafficking or whatever it's called. But uh, yeah. he, uh, I would not want to be. I I would never put myself in a position to to be accused of that. And uh, I definitely, if if he is innocent, then that blows. If he's not innocent, well, he gets everything he deserves. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, look at Julian Assange. She was accused of rape and uh, sex crimes. And so what, the, the Me Too movement has been insane. And it's like almost anyone who accuses any guy of any kind of allegation, I feel like everyone tries to believe the woman but never gives the guy a chance to prove his innocence. If he's guilty, he's guilty. And it, by all means, take him to jail. But if he's innocent, all of these accusations against him, he should have some sort of way to fight back. Because imagine some random chick that kind of knows you and or has worked for you starts accusing you of some sexual harassment or even some sexual allegations of you raping her or doing something weird right. and everyone's going to believe her because of the me too stuff and you have no way of proving anything because I mean, hey. maybe you were at work but maybe she says she was at work too and you've got no camera so you have no way to prove it and it's it could just spiral downhill so i um i, I was when i was playing a game on twitch uh I, we started they started bringing that up and uh i i piped in and i shouldn't have um and i basically said hey uh there is there is also a chance that she could be lying and then every single female on my on my chat was like uh the statistics is like 100 to 1 and all that much I'm, I'm just like first of all you're talking to a man that doesn't believe statistics because who made those stats where they come from how were they developed all those things also my dad's a lawyer uh, my dad's a defense attorney, and he, I've had first-hand knowledge of ca of his cases where uh, he has had in in a small town. He has had it where the uh, I mean, I'm not saying that they're they're all lying. I'm not even saying the majority of them are lying. I think the majority of them are telling the truth. But it does happen uh, to where the woman is falsely accusing just to you know you know backstab get get that uh, use all the weapons in your arsenal kind of thing. It does happen. 
and people that say that it doesn't are naive and not uneducated because if you try to educate yourself the stats will tell you hey uh 90 the, the chance of it happening is the chance of like an uh, of us hitting a black hole that's that's not true it actually happens more often than people think but it's not the majority and so um that is if if uh, I want it, I can be quoted on that one because I got my knowledge from a defense attorney that's been a defense attorney for 40 years. Uh, so uh, with uh, domestic cases and things like that. And so that's just my experience. And maybe my town is just full of a bunch of liars. <laughs> but Maybe we're the minority uh, in, in the world. But um, I would believe otherwise uh, to where it's not it's not as unheard of as people think it is. But I also don't want to take away the power of people, you know, of women saying that are victims. And so it's a it's a weird topic and a weird like uh, stance to say that there is some women that do accuse falsely. Uh, but it is true. Yeah. I mean, look at the baseball player that was accused of. Uh, giving some girl a black eye during sex and then it was all fake because she was extorting him and she took a photo of her in bed with the guy the next morning where she was perfectly fine mm. and then she started texting him and texting him and I think things went south and she accused him of either raping her and like beating her at the same time and none of it was true but he lost his contract he lost so much money it, it was terrible for the guy. So, yeah. yeah, you can't believe all women. And, I mean, even the Brett Kavanaugh crap, that was all fake to begin with. And d just, it's, and yeah, you just got to be careful out there. There's a lot of women who just want to extort money out of guys. So, uh, speaking of, it's kind of related to this topic. I have a, uh, I have a teacher that I know that uh, this teacher asked his class, like, uh, he was trying to basically say, all right, how he's trying to prepare them for more than just what the curriculum is and he's like so what happens if your parents tell you no and uh you don't get what you want and that kind of thing and i think it's like fourth graders or sixth graders something like that and uh one girl raised her hand and said uh, I was told that I can call uh, social services and say that they touched me. I'm like, what? <laughs> and then my the teacher friend of mine uh, said, what? And um, and basically pulled her aside, talked to the principal, and they all had they all had a conversation with her. It was like, you cannot be doing that. That's that's crazy. And that is that happens uh, not happened, but that was told to somebody that I know. That means that the internet and movies and these highly educated kids that have a phone which is basically a connection to all the information in the entire world almost uh are getting these ideas from these like worst case scenarios that are like viral and going and, and you know spreading around and, and it's it's thro throwing everything to shit man shit's hitting the fan <laughs> like where it's yeah it's crazy yep I'm not even going to get into statistics about the younger generation and Civil War and versus the older generation, and I'm not going to get into statistics get into about it, how man. degenerate the internet is. <laughs> but isn't this a fitness podcast? Well, I know that we've got a lot of, <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, I know we have a lot of fitness stuff to talk about, but yeah, the younger Gen X and Millennials are have a um, think that a Civil War is more imminent than anyone in the silent generation and boomers. They all, it's like... It gets less and less the older you get of a chance of a civil war, but the younger people have a higher chance believing that there's going to be a civil war. And I think it's also because the internet. And then Reddit is a degenerate place where a whole bunch of people and leftists are talking about civil war and how they want to just kill every person who votes for Trump. It is insane, bro. Oh, so, yeah. Kill, just, kill everyone that internet. votes for Trump? So they're basically yeah. saying if you exercise your right, I'm going to murder you. <laughs> they're, yeah, they're saying that they want an armed revolt if Trump wins. That they are literally going to arrange and practicing to shoot. If the majority of America <laughs> picks their leader, then the minority is going to... There, That doesn't make any sense because they already proved that they're the minority, so they have less people. <laughs> like, how would they win? <laughs> yes. Oh, yes, it, I know. What the, there are still ignorant dumbasses out there. That's I swear to you. What oh I another friend of mine 
I mean, I, there are clients. Uh, another client of mine is, um, uh, he told me that uh, America is not a capitalist country. Uh, capitalism died like a long time ago. It's, uh, I forget the word that, that he used. Um, damn, I'm dumb. I, I, I had it in my head and then I blanked as soon as I was trying to say it. Hold on a second. Uh, I'm going to look this up real quick. It's all good. Every, yeah, you have a bunch of leftists blaming capitalism for their faults, but yet it's working, and communism has killed millions of people. And do they want communism? They're saying in cap capitalism, everything is getting more expensive because of, because of capitalism. Well, how about inflation? How about because you voted for an idiot, I should say, an imbecile, who has no idea how to run an economy or a country and has wrecked the economy? We, are, we have lost $4,000 a year in income. And then not, that's not including inflation because of Biden and his, his policies. Even, I think even today, there was a story about the CEO, who, or the old CEO of Home Depot and Chrysler, who came out and said, this econ Biden policies have wrecked the economy and we need to all get ready for what's coming. So, yeah. Well, I mean, when's our next term? When's, our next, uh, when's the next president coming around? I, I, I forget the date. The elections are this November. This November, yeah. And then when when do they end? What like so when is when is when would the next when president we're... like be in office? Twenty twenty five January. Okay. So I'm curious to see how that goes. I I am very curious. Uh I don't ever um outwardly say uh any of my political views. Uh, I mostly just listen and then comment on other people's political views. But I got my own. Uh, but this is not the place for me to say it. Uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even tell my best friend who was very opinionated, uh, because everyone has their opinion and you never know who's a uh, Kung Fu warrior with words, which I am not. I, I have a podcast, but I, I am not a Kung Fu warrior with words and I will sound like a dumbass if I try to de defend my point. Uh, because if it's not about opinions, go ahead. Opinions are like buttholes. Everybody has one. Okay. Right. They're, they're just just annoying, but nobody, not everybody, has the truth and understanding of like what's what's happening. Like they don't even, even I don't know the inside baseball of what's going on. Like national security, like there could be things that you know would change in someone's mind. I mean, look at the House Speaker Johnson who changed his mind after going into a skiff about funding for BS crap and why are we funding wars outside of the U.S. This is so dumb, but. I actually have two. Yeah. I have two highly opinionated friends, and they're both on opposite sides of the spectrum. Um, you would agree with one of them because uh, I know what side of the spectrum you're on, and <laughs> I think the viewers know from your conversation uh, topics and, and <laughs> choice of phrases. Uh, I I actually devised. Uh, I, I I asked both of them. I was like, "Hey, y'all don't know each other, but you two are my closest friends, um, and you are both right now talking about something that you." very much disagree with and I am kind of mixed and I would like you guys to talk about it and I just listen and so we all we all got on PS5 chat or PS4 chat at the time and PS chat and um, uh, I was like okay and go and then the one who's much ruder than the other was just like well I don't give a fuck who you are but <laughs> this this and this and then the other person and they, they dude it went off for like three hours I was just like I regret this. <laughs> I regret, I regret yeah. getting them into a room together. <laughs> yeah. And people will Usually, die on their hills. Uh, I, yeah. I, I mean, talking usually, I, I, like, I'm very opinionated when it comes to politics because I'm literally in the news, like, almost 24-7. Um, because I'm, I'm watching so many different podcasts. I'm reading the news, like, every few hours just to kind of see what's going on and uh yeah it uh, all right so you had obama and biden for eight years you had invading crimea you, uh and a whole bunch of crap going down then in 2014 and then when trump comes in nothing happens with russia and ukraine russia's there's literally a, no new wars 18 months of no casualties you have the peace agreements the abraham accords in the middle east you have all the, a booming economy you literally had people even jim kramer who's always when he says something 
like something's b- booming at the next few minutes every it all crashes because he's it's ridiculous but everything's booming everyone's having a great time jim kramer says this is the best number of our lives and then biden comes back into office russia goes back into ukraine the economy starts tanking inflation's going through the roof he's lying and said he inherited a nine percent inflation rate when it was 1.4 the dude's a literal compulsive liar pathological insane liar yeah that dude People who even the vote de- for Biden are uninformed voters. The even the even the majority of the Democrats, like it's it, it it's a universal thought that Biden was a mistake. Like I think there's a very yes. small small minority, if anyone, that that uh, is like, yeah, Biden, that guy, <laughs> you know, but like, fuck yeah. No, there's still a lot of people. You know, there's still a lot of people who are like that. Really, a lot of people who are like that. I'm oh, not. Yeah, I'm not I talking about. I'm not talking about like uh, you saying you know like I'm talking about not on media because I don't trust media and how they portray um, like like what's the majority. I, I'm talking about like I'm in Colorado. Colorado is a purple state basically. It's blue and red, uh, but blue mostly governs. But red doesn't give, give a fuck, so they don't really vocalize their laws. Democrats, they their weapon is the media, and so um, it's you know. A toss up, but the one that is more vocalized is going to make more rules. You know what I mean? And so Colorado is like, uh, right now they're fighting over uh, guns right now. Like, um, it, they're trying to pass a bill that, if it passes, is going to put one of my clients who's a gun runner, uh, like a, uh, he sells guns legally, um, he's going to go out of business because they are saying that uh, vendors can't sell guns that have a detachable magazine. And so that only leaves. Uh, revolvers and bold action yeah and so um and the other side's like no and so i don't even know if that's fast yet or not i'm i'm waiting for him to update me um but that's how mixed everything is around here and from day to day all i hear is let's go brandon (laughs) i'm just like all right (laughs) and i know some people are blue and i know some people are red and all of them are just like fuck that guy dude like, fuck him. The, the problem is that Republicans are also spineless morons. Republicans, I hate most of them because they're retarded just as much, but not as much as like Democrats. So Democrats. I think the word you're, the you, you meant to say was Re- just politicians in general. <laughs> yeah, politicians suck. You should never praise politicians. You should never absolutely like them. They are tools. They are meant to be used for specific reasons, and that is it. You should never, like, absolutely love one. So there are a few Republicans who are great, but there are no good Democrats at all. Most, I mean, okay, so I'm not going to lie. Fetterman has actually amazed me quite a bit. After his, after I guess he had a stroke and after he had gone through um, whatever he went through, and then came back. He has probably the most common sense out of any liberal. But you have like people like AOC, Adam Schiff. You have the squad members who are literally anti-American who are in office. You have a bunch of Republican idiots who always side with Democrats. Like I said, Democrats are the people who are going to burn down your house. The Republicans might might hand you a glass of water to try to put it out. And that's it. Republicans Re- Re- are feckless. Republicans will and burn down your house. Never- Democrats will uh, mortgage. Will take it by by like um, through paperwork. <laughs> oh no no no! Re- Democrats are burning the house down. Republicans, they're not going to tell you that they're trying to burn the house down, but they're burning it down. <laughs> so that's why it's just like oh, we, we have so many ridiculous people. There, are, like I said, there are a few people like Thomas Massey. Thomas Massey, who's okay. Um, you have. Um, Kennedy, um, Senator Kennedy, who's actually absolutely amazing. Josh Hawley is okay. You've got, um, um, oh man, he's got a weird last name and he's from Florida. Uh, starts with a G, but uh, Gilly? he's okay. Because, no, um, Gunderson. Uh, nope. Guacamole. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, but no, th- so when they were on him, they even said that most of the people never show up to vote. They never are on the House floor. And so what they do is they had to call everyone to come vote and annoyed every single 
legislator. And I like that. Annoy the crap out of them. They need to be annoyed because they need to be voting on crap. At the same time, the more we can stall government and the more we can stall these idiots from making stupid decisions, the better. So, yeah, I hate I hate these people so much. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we need to fire them all. We need to fire them all. I have been privy like, to there your... Are no good liberals. I've been privy to your Facebook page for many years now. <laughs> Yeah, I've deleted it since because I'm like, I, if I keep posting this crap, I'm going to get in trouble. <laughs> I'm going to get suicided. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because all I'm doing is posting news stories with an opinion. I'm not posting just my opinion. I'm posting every news story backing up my claims. And I even have literal studies backing up my claims that liberals are out of... Okay, so conservatives are better looking than liberals statistically. Uh, how do you, have how do you factor that? Rates. Oh, even AI <laughs> is able to picture this out uh, and uh, talk to you about it. Uh, liberals have the highest mental disorders and the highest uh, rates of um, mental illness. Also, they have the highest rates of depression out of any other political affiliation group. And they have the lowest IQ out of any other political affiliation group. So it kind of makes you wonder... Do liberal do Democrats appeal to the mentally retarded, or do the mentally retarded just congregate around Democrats? And I like saying the R word. Well, we need to bring it back because it's an actual word. Uh, well, one uh, uh, I heard a comedian one time. He was like, um, "Who are we offending? Because they don't care. It's the people around them that, <laughs> that that get offended. And the whole if you get offended for somebody else that isn't offended, uh, then they have some." I have some things to work out. So, fitness. <laughs> uh, everyone that's listening, tangent. remember that this is a uh, this is a fitness podcast. Uh, but we do talk about nonsense. At, well, not nonsense, but non-related topics beforehand. Um, are you good with transitioning? We can t- we can keep talking about this, but we're gonna have an hour and a half I long video. Say, right. I would just say shout out. Uh, go watch Tim. And go watch Dan Bongino. Like, if you're going to watch anybody, at least watch them. They are going to give you facts straight. They're he's not going to. He's be talking like, about Tim Cast, not not me, Tim. You also watch yeah. me. I'll give you facts, right. but they're not going to be po- cool. political. Yeah. Watch <laughs> constantly watch this Tim. But at the same time, Tim Cast News is and Tim Cast IRL. They are. I mean, all they do is want to just talk about facts. He was a liberal. Um, I know that. You know, I didn't vote for Trump in 2016. Um, I also didn't vote for Hillary in 2016. I was just like, screw them both. But then after seeing what he did for the economy and everything else, I obviously voted for him in 2020. And seeing what Biden has done to the economy too, I'm like, oh, well, now I'm voting for him now. But I was never a Trump person to begin with. I was looking back on all of my Trump posts and or my old Facebook posts and I was bashing Trump and and Clinton because I thought it was just stupid. But yeah, if you're gonna if you're gonna get actual news, Dan Bongino, he's an ex Secret Service agent, so he knows he protected Obama and he protected Bush, so he's gonna tell you how it is and then tim tim cast uh he's just telling you what it is he's he's, just, he's a milk toast fix, fence sitter so yeah so to the, to the fitness topics <laughs> let me uh let me yes. let me go back to my notes real quick i totally forgot anything okay so if uh, we're, I'm, I'm going to try to start adding um, show notes and timestamps to the video so that people can jump to, you know, uh, things. And uh, this one's going to be about the mountain that is perceived by people that don't work out. And so there is there is literally like a divide in the world. Uh, people that work out and have worked out and know that it's not well and there's also a middle ground gray area uh that no it's not terrible it's actually enjoyable and it makes you feel great and it's basically free drugs and then there is the people that have never worked out and uh or have but incorrectly so i guess that's another subgroup where they have tried it it was terrible and then so they went back to their group but even deeper and they have a hate for working out not just a distaste for it uh so we have the people that have a taste for working out people have to have a distaste for it and the, the, the spectrum within all of it uh and people that hate to work out or people that 
if you were like, hey, you want to go to the gym, they would look at you and be like, are you fucking serious? No. <laughs> like, well, I would never go to the gym. That sounds god awful. I'm going to be in there flailing around, sweating, and, and just uh, being uncomfortable and in pain, and I might hurt my, hurt myself, and for what? I'm not. I'm never going to get that kind of body. I'm. I'm. I'm this type of person, and uh, that's it. And it's never going to change. Or they're. Or they make the excuse outwardly, which is un- probably untrue inwardly. But they make the excuse. Um, I don't want to get all. I don't want to get bulky. I don't want to get all ripped and chiseled. Uh, that's. Uh, that. That's not. Um, I don't. I don't want that for my body. Well. There's all these like expectations and assumptions and just ideals that people have uh, when it comes to working out and how just bad it is. And most of them, if not all of them, are entirely misguided uh, by movies, shows, uh, just fear in general, Uh, just basically making excuses to not try it. Uh, And they don't know that it's one of the funnest and satisfying and it feels great things in the entire world basically their idea is if i'm going to start working out i need to start going seven days a week jet fuel on everything and just blast myself the entire time uh have you ever have you ever came across people like that oh yeah definitely um i mean you see them outside of the gym all the time, at least bashing some others. And uh, then once they get in the gym and you really start to let them work out and you really start to show them what it's like to <clears throat> work out correctly and how it feels when they're finished, they start to really like it. And it's probably one of the best things that you could do for your mental health, period, um, for anybody. And I've trained people who didn't want to come to the gym at all and thought it was ridiculous to come to the gym. Um, and then when I started training them and they finally started coming and they had some, they had some mental issues, like they were taking medications for it. But after the workouts and after about a month of working out, they felt so good. They feel like they didn't have to quite take as much of their medication anymore. They started like physically feeling better, mentally feeling better. And working out is probably the best thing you could do for yourself, period. So, yeah. If people are just uh, tuning in for the first time, uh, I actually did a podcast episode on the effects of uh, working out and depression, and it is a proven fact that uh, resistance training is more effective than uh, some medications and can actually replace it or um, lessen the amount that you have to take because of the hormones that regulate inside your brain because you're resistance training and gaining muscle. Uh, so it basically working out equals happiness. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a literal one for one on it. Um, the way that I approach, uh, one of these people, uh, I actually have a, uh, one of my friends, he, he has an aversion to working out that is pretty strong. Excuse me. He has an aversion to working out is pretty strong and it's because he, uh, drinks every night. Um, it, he drinks a lot less. So, uh, now, uh, I've been chipping away at him and, uh, I got him to, I found one thing that triggered him to, to be like, you know what? I'm going to start working out. And I started really just mentioning his back pain all the time. And I was like, you know, <laughs> like this back pain would go away if you, you know, if you, if you worked on your posture a bit and uh, also lost a little bit of weight and started, you know, sitting less and things like that. Um, But I never got him to actually do anything until I did a Facebook post. Uh, And it was, I believe, uh, February. It was a February workout challenge. So I just made a post and I did, I posted a workout. I was like, uh, do this amount of push-ups, this amount of sit-ups, this amount of whatever's. Um, but each one had its own day. So, uh, I think it was a hundred, uh, 50 pushups for beginners, a hundred pushups for advanced. Uh, and that's all you did that day. So I don't care what your workout was. I don't care, whatever, just do this amount of pushups Monday, do this amount of sit-ups Tuesday, do this amount of squats Wednesday, and then so on. And so it had a structured thing for five days of the week and then two of the days were rest. 
And so uh, it kind of just went through uh, a full body workout throughout. Uh, it was basically a try a try split um, throughout throughout the week. And so uh, he felt, and I, I I thought about why this got to the point that I'm about to explain. Um, and he came to me and was like, Hey, uh, I, I, I started your, uh, I started your workout. I was like, what <laughs> you did? <laughs> and I was like, all right, let's go. <laughs> I'm really trying not to say his name. Uh, if I do, I'm gonna have to go back and edit it and uh, bleep it out. So, but I might, it might, I might slip on accident. Um, but, um, uh, I was like, that's great. Uh, well, how'd it go? He's like, you know what? It wasn't terrible. And he told me why he started it. He said, one, he didn't feel harassed because uh, I basically, I make him feel bad on purpose because we're friends, we have a rapport, and um, I, I don't make him feel bad, but I, I mention it. And uh, he doesn't like talking about me being a personal trainer uh, and things like that because, probably because, you know, he's out of shape. Uh, and, you know, if he talks about fitness, he doesn't want to get on the topic of himself, you know what I mean? And so I just don't talk about it. Uh, we just don't really talk about it and uh, he makes jokes and then I, I I'm like oh yeah well you know it could work out and that's about that's about as far as that goes uh, and finally after years of uh, of of you know me being a personal trainer and you know him knowing about it and me I, I did try hard one time to get him I was like hey I got this for you free program it's literally two thousand dollars value like you're getting it for free and that doesn't work if someone's in in the denial stage or in the like in, in just not even in contemplation just the rejection stage it, it doesn't matter how much value you give them for free especially if it's free they don't they need that they don't have a motivation to do it um and that alludes to another topic that i want to talk about too but um he came to me and he was like yeah uh, I started doing the the push-ups and uh, they weren't bad because uh, in the post I said don't do all 100 at a time do 10 and then carry on with your day then do another 10 and then carry on with your day so he was doing I believe 50 I think he did 60 um, which wasn't asked but uh, I think the the quota for him was 50 and he ended up doing 60 the first day and I was like okay cool and he's like yeah I just did 10 uh, I was do I was uh, he works from home sometimes and uh, uh, he took ev like every half hour, he did 10 push ups. And he said, I felt better during it. Like the first couple were hard, but after like the third, uh, after like uh, two hours of it, and uh, I was t during my breaks, I'd do 10 push ups. And like, it actually made my work better. And I was like, I don't want to say I told you so, <laughs> but <laughs> so it, it, it was like a trickle effect. And he's like, Yeah, this wasn't bad. I just wanted to try it for one day. Uh, I was like, are you going to do the next day? He's like, yeah, hell yeah. I was like, okay, cool. And he did it for the entire month and he lost 15 pounds just by doing the, uh, the workout. Uh, and it wasn't just the workout because he was doing the workout. He was in a mental state of, well, if I'm doing this, maybe I should drink less. And then, well, maybe I should make better food choices. And it was just a trickle down effect. And that is it for the people viewing right now and the people listening. That's how you approach fitness. You don't balls to the motherfucking walls right from the get-go <laughs> you you trickle you, you start with you start with one small thing i always tell my clients we're going to meet you where you're at and do about 10 percent more and if 10 percent seems like a scary number one percent more whatever just a little bit more uh and we're gonna and 100 days from now which is only about three months 100 days from now you're gonna look back and you're gonna be in the same amount of effort that you're doing that when we started, but you're going to be doing a lot more. Uh, and I'm, I'm not trying to get you on a, uh, on a treadmill and make you go at nine and uphill at nine incline and, and make you sweat all your fat off. That's, that's not, that that's the idea that people have, but because it was a structured, Hey, it's a small thing. Only do one thing uh, each day. And also, it wasn't targeted at him. It was a post. And so he felt he's the type of person that if you tell him to do something, he'll tell you, fuck you. Uh, so he, he was like, I just, I saw the post and I was like, okay, that seems really easy. So I'm gonna try it. And so I feel like that is a, that's a really good way to try to approach somebody that has an aversion to working out is to, is to make a really easy something for them to do and then throw it near them. Don't throw it at them, throw it near them and then let them find it by themselves. <laughs>
<laughs> what do you think? Yeah. That's great because you're not you're not forcing them or they don't probably feel forced to do something because you're not like targeting them or you're not like singling them out. Um, and like you said, you you don't want to go balls to the wall early. Like you you got to build up because your body again adapts. And if you go balls to the wall, you're gonna burn out super quick. And there's no real room for progress because you're going so hard for so long from the get go. So. Take it step by step. Go like you said, like even just a few things for like a minute a day and then move on to the next day and then maybe increase it. Even what I've done for people is tell them, all right, do as many things as you can in two minutes. Maybe just like do some squats one day, do two minutes worth and do as many as you can in one day. And then maybe next week do it again and see if you improve by just one. <clears throat> Same for push-ups. Um... Same for, you know, pull-ups, bicep, like, each muscle group. Just do two minutes worth. Even sit-ups. Do as many as you can. And then hopefully each week, maybe progress, but you only do it once a week. So you kind of just have all week to kind of recover, slash, maybe work on something else that you want, and then do it again. And then maybe eventually we'll go from two minutes to having a 30-minute workout. But, like, you're not going to be going, again, balls to the wall during the 30 minutes. You're going to be doing what you can, and it's going to be maybe... You do three sets. Maybe that takes you a total of like two and a half minutes. Well, that's 30 seconds more than the two minutes of volume that you were doing last time. So there are good ways to incrementally grow your progress and not go so hard from the beginning. So what you did also by not forcing one person to do something or singling somebody out and hope, and inspiring someone to do something on their own, they're going to probably stick with it more than if you like, hey, how about you do this? And then they're kind of like, adverse to it and they don't want to necessarily do it um so i think the self-motivation is the best motivation rather than telling somebody to do something and then them trying to impress you and do it it got it has to come from them if they're going to see progress so uh speaking of motivation that actually alludes to the i mentioned it before that alludes to the next uh topic i want to talk about um what motivates you to work out having a purpose knowing what to work out for uh, if you're a parent, working out to just lift your child is awesome. Working out to be able to play with your child more often is great. Being able to keep up with them, like that is a purpose. So that is one thing to do if you have kids and you're trying to keep up with them. If you're older and you're trying to work out, maybe just trying to work out enough to where you can put something in a cabinet above your head. Or if you travel a lot, lifting up a, a bag your, of your luggage to put it in an overhead compartment on a plane like having a purpose, knowing what you're trying to work out for and or trying to make sure you're staying healthy and knowing why you want to do that is going to be the best motivation. Just going in, working out to look good, you're going to lose motivation quick because maybe you're not eating right and maybe you're not looking good. And you're going to lose motivation real quick. Um, Actually, I'd like to comment on uh, yeah. that right there. Um, yeah. that, so there's a stage where people get where uh, it starts working and let's say somebody is uh, 30% body fat. So almost morbidly obese, um, they're in the obese factor and they, uh, they go down to 25% body fat and it, it literally shocks them <clears throat> because they're like, I didn't think that this would work. I was at, I was on my last rope. I was signed up for a gastric bypass. I, I'm actually talking about, um, a few clients that I've had, uh, and they get to a stage where it's starting to work. And then, they're happy where they're at, but they're not finished yet. And they're like, oh, maybe this is okay. And uh, that's, that's also a dangerous road as well. Because they, 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 get, they lose some weight. They feel better. They, they get internally healthier. Um, and, but they're still at like 25% body fat or, or higher um, wherever they started. They, let's say they lost like a big chunk, but they're still you know in the unhealthy zone. Um, the whole self body image and, uh, basing your motivation off of your own perspective of your own self body image, that's a dangerous, uh, motivation to have because that shifts as you shift, it shifts daily and uh, it could shift from one person making a single comment. I can tell you right now that, um, if I get complimented, uh, cause like I'll, I'll have uh, a month where I relax a little bit and I, I'm just doing maintenance and I'm like, Oh, you know what? I need to get back down to, you know, 15% body fat. And so, uh, I 
go through my workout and about two weeks later i'm i'm shrink i'm you know i'm back to where i was and uh one of my comments is like hey you're looking good i'm like oh cool thank you he's like yeah you, you you're you, it's like it melted off before my eyes i was like well you know i i i do this for a living <laughs> and afterwards i'm just like i do look good back to being lazy <laughs> that's that's terrible <laughs> so yeah, I, it can I, lead to complacency exactly i tell people not to compliment me um i tell my clients i was like never compliment me ever about my physique nothing i need it to be i need it to be my personal journey and uh, i'm after strength and when i am going for like photo shoots to the gym or something then i that is also i'm i'm very money motivated and so it's a it's a business strategy for me honestly and so i need to be fit in order to sell personal training people believe me so i can help people and because if they don't believe me i can't help them and um advertisements and so that those are some major drivers for me because this gym is my baby and it's like it's my creation and so i'm part of this creation my 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 outward image is part of it and i represent myself and my business and so it's, it's like a self-proudness kind of thing self-pride and so that that's my major motivation but if someone tells me hey you're looking good i'm like cool fuck <laughs> like everything goes to shit oh, yeah. <laughs> see i mean working out to look good is okay for some instances like because everyone wants to look good especially going to the beach everyone wants to be feel like they're gonna be comfortable in their own skin and that's okay but like you said, once you maybe lose like 20 pounds or so because you worked really hard and you feel, hey, I look good. Now I don't need to work as out as hard or I can start eating what I want to since I've lost so much weight and I feel better. It, you can start to eventually relapse and it can start to get worse again. And so it's not going to be a consistent thing and you're going to get complacent. So that's why I was like working out just to look good isn't always the best thing. Having a purpose and knowing like I want to be healthy or I want to have a better life uh, expectancy or your the longevity of life needs to be better or i don't want to be in, ending up in a in a nursing home because i can't take care of myself like i have an 80 he's about to be 82 83 and he just deadlifted 205 today and he's had back herniation and and he's had a bunch of crap going on uh he's lifted 240 before Go ramps dude but he's just doing two yeah yeah <laughs> um he's doing really 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 good and he he's not in a nursing home his sister she didn't work out very often and she had like a metal neck metal knees she had a metal uh shoulder it was just terrible um and she just withered away she was like a literal skeleton by before she went which is really sad but um yeah i mean working out like it, so when i was competing i had a purpose i had to work out to make sure that i could win and that was a motivating factor for me. And it really right. gave me more energy and more focus in the gym to do better. And so, like I said, if you're just working out to work out, you're on autopilot. And it, I mean, it's okay, but you're, you might not see the progress you're, you want to see, or you, you just might stall out a little bit. I think, I think the biggest motivation for me that kind of umbrellas and overshines, uh, outshines, um, at all the other motivations I've had in my life, because you, you, you have different motivations throughout your life. Um, it is the, I'm a, I'm a scientist at heart, and it's the experimental value that working out gives. And I not only, ha I'm blessed with not only having myself as my, as my own, you know, I don't want to say test subject, because that kind of puts a bad spin on personal trainers, but I, I don't only train myself, I train other people. And you really don't understand how the human body works unless you train other people and train a lot of them and uh somebody somebody on instagram who has a great uh body and has never trained another person should not be giving fitness advice to the public because it's a very individual thing and i really like uh, i i don't think i like anything more anything and i have a lot of passions like i like uh software engineering I like art. Um, I can play five instruments. Like I love uh, playing games and doing the whole podcast thing and the, and the Twitch. I love, uh, from the top of my heart, um, uh, fitness science and the way that nutrition, body, like everything works together. And uh, it's almost on like an obsessive level, but in a healthy way. It's a, at least it's a healthy topic. And 
I it's really I have I've never felt more joy than when my clients get results and it's like right before my eyes and it's and it's honestly they're shocked they're like I'm, I'm standing tall and my daughter said that I, I look like a GI Joe like I've never had I've never thought I could be like that and they're over there like beaming and I'm just like yes <laughs> nice yeah and so I think that's the biggest motivation for me is just the pursuit of the understanding of how the body works and how to manipulate the body with um, substance which is nutrition with action which is your routine and also with mindset and so those three things together and how uh, how like how to do different things not only just losing weight but also gaining strength fixing someone's posture uh rehabbing after a surgery or after a broken leg or a broken ankle um fixing sciatica like th those things are just all really cool to me and so if somebody's looking for if somebody's like listening to this podcast and they're like all right well if, uh, if it's not if it's not to look good, like what should I work out for? Uh, if you're a scientist kind of mind where you're where discovery, self discovery is one, is one of the things that brings you joy. Be a scientist in, in the fitness field and learn, learn as much as you can. Cause there's a lot of learning. The entire process isn't just going to the gym. The entire process is learning. You're learning. You're learning about yourself. You're learning how nutrition and weightlifting and cardio and all these different things uh make your body transform and it's it's a really cool process and i i know i don't have to tell you that because you're you're as geeky as i am <laughs> oh yeah i love studies i love looking at the different studies that come out especially brad schoenfeld he's got a lot of studies that come out weekly for the most part and just kind of learning something each week uh, on either nutrition as well or how the body functions or the things that of ways of how to train to see the best benefit even so <clears throat> uh, one of the studies that he, he had posted recently was you know doing a leg extension at 90 degrees versus 40 degrees and there was a higher yield in gains in the 40 degree angle so while you're sitting doing leg extensions sitting at 40 degrees actually benefited you more than sitting at 90 degrees so it just the smallest little things that you can do uh, to see better gains more efficiently is some, so much fun to learn because I, I like to keep things as simple as I can and as precise as possible so that you can do the least amount of work to get the most amount of benefit out of it. And I mean, even knowing that like he had another study that had come out that said, you no need to do more than two second um, negatives or the eccentric motions no more no need to do more than two because it's it, it's going to almost be the same it, it's kind of preliminary but at the same time it's a good starting position to know that if you're just contracting the muscle and you're focusing on not using momentum you're going to build muscle and that is trying to find out the easiest way to do stuff is mo more efficient easier ways right L lazy people other. get get more done like uh, get it done mm -hmm. faster uh, i should put it faster more efficiently and if you're a hard working person and and you uh and you had a task you'll get that done if you ask a lazy person to do a task they will think of a way to get it done the easiest i don't know why i said that it's just yeah. it, that popped in my head and i was like this relates <laughs> well i think uh, i think uh, bill gates said something like that yeah. he wanted to hire some of the uh, that's the quote laziest people because they figure out how to do things quicker because they don't want to spend so much time on it so um it is uh we're 53 minutes in and i kind of want to reiterate some of the points uh because i feel like this was a really powerful um podcast session and uh it, it, this can definitely relate to literally everybody because even top tier bodybuilders and personal trainers get unmotivated and uh go through everyone's human you know no matter what we look like everyone's human mm -hmm. some people have the experience of knowing that fitness literally makes your life better in every single way possible um and some people don't have the experience that fitness makes your life better in every way possible and the idea of what uh, what it gets the idea of what it takes to get there and also the idea of the reward is skewed by the people on the other side of the spectrum that have never worked out and so that's where that aversion comes from they think it's all this work for not enough gain and 
or just work in general and they don't care about the game because they they have an aversion to work and it's really not that much work if you approach it correctly and so that's the first point that i want to make is that if somebody if you're not working out right if you stumbled upon the, up upon this podcast and you are in the contemplation phase uh, if you're if you stumbled upon this uh, podcast and you're not working out currently, then you are in the contemplation stage, which means that you're thinking about it. And if you meet a, a, a go hung 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 go, if you meet somebody that's super jacked and just in your face about it, tell them to tell them to fuck off. Uh, just start with something super duper small it does not matter what it is as long as you take the first step even if it's going for a 10 minute walk that's time training uh the very first thing that you have to train is time allotment you have to uh, you have to be able to figure out how to fit in at least one to two hours a week into into dedicated towards fitness into your life and so if you don't ha- if you don't train time allotment then you're not going to get anything done so go for a uh, hour long walk maybe an hour long for some of the people that um walking I mean, walking makes you sweaty but or meditate for for 30 minutes to an hour find find 30 minutes to an hour somewhere in your week and you don't even have to work out you can just say hey this hour's for fitness remove your m- remove yourself from your routine and go do something else and say eventually instead of what i'm doing right now i will be in the gym or i will be working out of my house but training time allotment that's the first thing once you have confidently time allotment down and you have at least one hour two hours however many that you're that you're putting aside for fitness then do uh 10 push-ups or do 10 practice doing a squat 10 times or whatever do something super duper tiny and then stop for the day and do something else. And then tomorrow, do 15 push-ups or 20, whatever whatever is the appropriate escalation. So that as your body grows, because it will grow each time, even from that 10 push-ups that one day, your body's like, what is this? If you've never done push-ups before and you, and you only do 10 push-ups, you may, you, there's a good possibility you'll be sore the next day just because your your body is literally not used to it and it's a shock value. Repeat that process, add a little bit of grain of salt or a little bit of grain of sand on top of the pile each time until you start to get more confident in it. Learn, have a podcast like this that teaches you in depth, in in high explanation, saying, hey, this is what you should do and this is why. And here's the proof. Here's examples. We have clients that we've done this with and we're not going to say bullshit out of our asses. We're, we're going to say stuff that we've seen with our own eyes, that we've trained with our own clients, and we've trained ourselves with. And so add small bits each day until you feel like you're, you've ramped up to about three days a week. Two to three days a week, that is perfectly fine. If you are not going for show and you're just trying to be healthy and you are trying to get in there, if you want to do four days a week, that's fine. I would not advise six to seven days a week from the get-go because you will do that for half a week and say no <laughs> and never do it again and then it'll, it'll be even harder to get you back into the into the trying stage so that those are the points that i kind of wanted to uh burrito wrap uh around this podcast because we made a lot of good points today and uh i'm actually really proud about this podcast one I really like this episode i'm proud of, i'm proud of all of them but this one i think is one that i would actually send to people to if they were in the contemplation co- contemplation stage, I would send them this this uh, episode to help convince them. Yeah, I mean, you said it, and um, as long as people just don't go so gun ho to begin with and and pace yourself, you're gonna enjoy working out. But if you go like balls to the wall, like I said earlier, like f- in the very beginning, you might burn yourself out and might not enjoy it. So. Take it in stages, take it in steps, and learn as you go. Ask us, and um, if you need more motivation, just look to, as to reasons why you want to work out. But you said everything perfectly. Awesome, man. Thank you. Uh, if you want to get a hold of us, uh, we are not famous yet, so we still have time for everybody. <laughs> um, you can go to personaltrainerandcompany.com. There's a contact form there. You can email me at contact at personaltrainerandcompany.com. Or uh, my phone number is even on the, the website, personaltrainerandcompany.com. Uh, Paul, uh, how can they get a hold of you? Yeah, so if you want to get in contact with me, 
uh, non-political contact with me, you can go to my uh, website, theburnacademy.com, and uh, contact me. But it, don't send me hate mail about po- political opinions because everyone, like I said, everyone has an opinion. They're like buttholes. Everybody send me the hate mail about everything Paul said. <laughs> yeah. If you send me something, I'm just going to ignore it because I don't, I don't care. So, uh, that's all the time we have today. We're uh, hitting it right on the nail. Uh, We're at 59 minutes, 30 seconds. Uh, Thank you, everybody, for watching. This is the Buns and Thighs podcast, and uh, we love you.